I'm Kolega Potuma. I am a poet and a theater practitioner from Cape Town, South Africa. For those of us whose lives are placed adjacent, next to or somewhere where the microscope cannot find us, cannot locate where the story begins, cannot write our stories without tragedy. I have a background in theater, but I, um, I would say that my journey towards uh, theater and poetry have been very different. Um, my uh, entry into the theater was kind of through a formal um, training or institution, whereas with the poetry, I kind of found that in a more informal way, and I sort of picked that up, I would sort of say, on the street uh, through slam poetry, through open mics, um, and I didn't really have a formal um, relationship with poetry until maybe recently. And I would say that the theatre, um, my relationship with the theatre is the thing that's really um, informed the way that I think about poetry or writing poetry. When I think about rhythm and style and the way that I like for words to sit um, in on the page and how it's translated in performance, um, yeah, I guess that the theatre stuff is what's helped me think about that. Frames hanging at the edge of the nail, threatening to dislodge if not altered or framed correctly. For those of us marked present, bodies without names, names without documentation, who are read widely when we are translated or dead or out of print or banned or controversial or between two worlds or exiled or censored, who are freak anthems in the corridors of institutions that bank on our silence and absence, who are betrayed by memory, whose earliest memory is all the ways they gorged our bodies before they were fully formed, whose salutation is in a roll call that calls you last or leaves you out, who know that this is not a drill, even when the drill borrows your body for the head count, those whose daily bread is the call to be more than fight and friction. Come, let us begin writing as it was, as it is, is how we exhume the bodies and give them names. I would say that the kinds of subjects that my work deals with or is interested in is memory. I use my work to think about the archives, to think about memory, uh, memory that has been passed down to us, um, memory that we have as people, um, and how that influences the way that we are in the world. So I think a lot about being black, being queer, being a black queer woman in South Africa and the lineage of that. And yeah, how it, how it informs everything, how it informs the way that I live and move in South Africa today and outside of South Africa, I guess. My relationship with writing or writing poetry has changed or it's taken different turns um, over the years or over the last couple of years. I would say that at first it, it, I used to think a lot about how the poems would sound or how they would be performed. I would say that that was before I got published. Um, and then I guess with the publication <laughs> of um, the books came 
not that I would say that I was divorced from thinking about that, but I guess um, it became important to think about how the words sit on their own because it's not every poem that makes it into performance, I guess. Um, and sometimes the poems that work in writing don't always work in performance and vice versa. Um, I don't know, I guess it depends. It depends on the poem, it depends on, you know, the performance as well. I guess the way that I approach each work or each uh, thing that I want to present is to think about the overall feeling uh, or themes that I want to explore in the work um, or what it is that I want to share. Um, for this particular work, um, it's a work that I guess talks about the intersection or the overlaps of identity, queerness, religion, um, and how those things intersect, but also how they friction. So I think about that and then I, a lot of the work is very collaborative. So the collaborators who come on board, we then brainstorm what are some of the textures and feelings and sounds that we want to uh, build into the work to sort of create, I like to call them these worlds. Um, I like to divide the, the work up into po like poems and each poem we sort of build a world uh, around it to create a larger, um, yeah, a larger world that the audience can come into to experience the poems. Most, some of us, have no name or lives that others can hold on to. Only a past or a moment in the past that can be picked at and dissected until the examiner finds what they are looking for. The thing you hide with polite conversation when the visitors come we have learned how to hold it all. Scripture, the upbringing, the coming out, the folding in, the lovers who disappear while we are not looking, the ones who disappear while we are, the baptisms that drown us into silence, the baptisms disguised as cleansing, the baptisms where the Holy Spirit trumps reason, trumps justice, the baptisms we, they, I call divine intervention. The Old Testament is a cage, church, three times a week, a family I cannot shame, a sinking ship with Peters who believe they can walk on water. I do not know if such powers are given to those who do not believe, or those who doubt, or those who hoard two lives in one body, bodies so heavy they could sink themselves with all these secrets they keep contained. How they, we, I, tell no one and ask no one to help me carry a cross that crosses me out. In the northern suburb, I am a shadow, a dream deferred, forbidden in this language I love in, am aroused in. Am I even allowed to be aroused like this? The word is gospel. The word is a prison is a cell without bars, is a prayer mat that zips my mouth and wears out my knees. I am always in this position, begging for something. In the northern suburb, I am the repentance. The southern suburb is a march, is a club, is a new kind of paranoia. Banners and theory replace the Bible. I stay away from the march. I also stay away from the church. I am wearing another kind of mask. I have no language to talk about what I am discovering or what I have been hiding. Only scriptures that shame my body. Only scriptures that shame who and how I love. My mouth has been inside the Quran. 
My faith is not the only thing that has been converted. In the north, my hands are raised in worship. In the south, my hands are raised in protest. Either way, I'm always surrendering. I credit my first encounter or my first relationship with performance to the church. Um, I guess that growing up in the church or being raised in the church, that's the first place where I saw um, the merging or the, the coming together of text, uh, the scripture and performance. Because um, essentially the people who, you know, who get up there to share the word, uh, not only have a reverence for the word, for scripture, but there's a certain kind of um, drama or performance that goes into trying to relay the message, whatever the message is, in, in that environment, um, in a way that people are going to resonate with it or connect with it or um, sort of come on board with the agenda that you're trying to do. And so growing up in that environment, my grandfather was a minister, my dad was a minister, and watching them just sort of have this relationship with the word that was very, I would say performance driven or, um, yeah, performance driven. Um, it's, I guess, in a way, really started to shape how I started to think about um, how else the word text could live um, on stage or in an environment where you're sharing it with other people.